two main reasons we get caught in negative thinking and two solutions for changing this. People with chronic pain and chronic symptoms, chronic illness, tend to have really negative ways of thinking. This could look like fear thoughts, worry thoughts, catastrophizing. It could be preoccupation or obsessiveness. It could be critical thinking, thinking critically about our symptoms, our body, just ourselves in general. And it can also be despairing, hopeless thinking. These negative thinking patterns in my work with people with chronic pain, chronic symptoms, they are rampant. They are very common and we need to work towards changing this in order to heal. Now I'm careful here saying this because I'm not blaming you for this. Every moment in your life, every adversity you faced, every trauma you faced, even your chronic symptoms coming on in the first place, they wired us to think in this way. So we're not to blame for this. And I truly relate to you. Personally, I've had a lot of fear thoughts over my lifetime, ever since young childhood, and I am really predisposed to obsessive thinking. Now, when I was in chronic pain, my obsession turned to my pain. I was obsessed about it. I was thinking about it 80, 90% of the day, every waking moment, talking about it in every relationship, I, every relationship I was in. I was obsessed. And at many points in my life, I was, I've also had despairing thinking hopeless, helpless thoughts, thoughts that breed depression and that dorsal vagal state of shutdown and collapse. And so negative thinking is often really tied in with chronic pain and symptoms. And one of the reasons it develops in the first place, when I'm working with clients, thoughts and beliefs and working on changing them is really essential. Now, these could be thoughts and beliefs about your body, about your symptoms themselves. And that's important, we need to change that, but it's also just your thinking patterns in general. So there's two main reasons that I see negative thinking take place. And usually it's a combination. If you relate to one of these more than the other, that's fine, but it's likely a combination. So I'll go through these two main reasons and then I'll talk about two main solutions that you can start working towards. Now, the first reason, is a concept that comes from a therapist named Deb Dana. And this is story follow state. Now I'll explain this here. Old therapy, decades old, is very top down. You challenge and change your thoughts, you feel differently in your body. You challenge and change your thoughts, you feel differently emotionally. You challenge and change your thoughts, you feel more regulated. It was very top down, one direction. And as we know more and more now that, of course, it goes both directions, but a lot of times the state of your nervous system, the state of your emotional well-being, what's going on internally is creating the story. This is the idea of story follow state. Now, of course, it goes both ways to some degree, but, you know, in my readings, it's about 80-20. About 80% is going up. Messages of safety or danger are going up from your body to your brain, and only about 20% are going brain to body. So we need a somatic focus. We essentially need a somatic focus, and this is really vital to understand. I'll give you an example. Years apart, when I was first starting my business, I was still fairly dysregulated, and starting a business is stressful, so I was feeling a lot of anxiety at this time. And I remember I got this letter from the CRA being, and CRA is basically the Canadian tax, um, the tax agency. So you get a letter from the C CRA, it's kind of like the IRS in the States. It can be scary. And I got this letter being like, hey, there's something wrong with your taxes, please call us. Now that occurred and I was already anxious and it just spiraled from there. I was having obsessive thinking about it all day, trying to get a hold of them. I was having fear thoughts that my whole business was going to crumble and fall apart. Everything was going to you know, be awful. I was going to have to sell my home. It just escalated so quick. So what occurred here is, was there some danger? Sure. 
Was it major danger? No, looking back, it wasn't. But what happened is the story followed the state. I was already in a very anxious fight or flight mode. And so the story that followed was one of extreme panic. The story that followed was one of extreme terror. And so it's important to understand this connection. Now, years later, a few months ago, I got a letter from the CRA again, being like, hey, there's something wrong with your taxes. And I'm much more regulated than I was years years ago. And it was there. And I called my accountant. I dealt with it. And I felt quite calm in my body. I was already quite regulated. And I barely had any fear thoughts. I barely had any obsessive thinking about it. Dealt with the issue, moved on. Same letter, basically, very different response. So the story that was developed in both of these cases was dependent on the state of my body. And power is knowledge, or knowledge is power here. I'm saying it backward. Knowledge is power. We need to understand this because otherwise people are trying to challenge and change their thoughts thinking that's the issue, but it's the state of our nervous system. So the solution here, the first solution to changing your negative thinking is you need to regulate your nervous system. If you don't do that, you are going to be challenging and changing your thoughts for the next 50 years. And every time you change one, it's going to be followed by a wave of other negative thinking, other fearful, obsessive thinking. So you need to regulate the nervous system. I cannot emphasize this enough. If you want to change the way you think, you need to change your state. Story follows state, people. Now I have a video on this, seven steps seven steps to regulating your nervous system. I'll link this to the top, put it down below. This is the little introduction video. Check it out. This is a process that I follow when I'm working with clients at my clinic, Pain Psychotherapy Canada. And in our course, the Somatic Safety Method, we deep dive into this work. We provide, well, over 60 plus somatic practices to support your nervous system in regulating and your thoughts changing over time. So that's the first reason negative thinking occurs and the first solution to it. Now, the second reason negative thinking occurs is fear thoughts, negative thinking, obsessive thinking, despairing thoughts. They become wired into your brain. Your brain becomes wired to think this way. And from a young age, Lots of times before people had chronic pain or symptoms, they thought in these ways. They thought in a very negative way. And the longer you do that, the more your brain becomes wired to think in this way. Your brain does not move towards what's good for it. I wish it, that was the case. You wouldn't be watching this video if that was the case. Your brain moves towards what's familiar. Really important, your brain does not move towards what's good for you. Your brain moves towards what's familiar. And if you've been thinking in a negative way since a really young age, probably due to adversity or things you faced in life, your brain has been training. It's been training to think this way. When I was first healing, I'd play this game where, and I was starting to become more regulated, but I could almost watch my brain trying to latch on it was trying to latch on to anything as I went about my day that was slightly dangerous. Same with the CRA letter. It latched on. Many years ago, it latched onto that CRA letter and it was followed by a wave of fear thoughts and hopeless, helpless thinking. And so my brain became wired to think in this way. Now we can rewire it. That's the solution here. We can rewire our brain to not think in this negative way. I want to emphasize again, you are going to need to work on nervous system regulation. Don't avoid that. Story follows state. But the other thing we need to do is help our brain rewire so we're not thinking in these negative patterns all the time. I use brain retraining with people. A great brain retraining I have on this channel is for free. The three R skill. I'll link it above and below. Check it out. It helps you rewire your brain. Now I want to be clear about brain retraining and thoughts. This is one of the hardest things I work on with people through and through. It is one of the hardest things because it takes so much consistency and so much awareness. So the three R skill, even though it's probably a 10 minute video, study it 
because learning that process and then applying it throughout the day constantly at first is going to be really helpful to rewire your brain and teach it to think in a more balanced way. Again, we don't need to think more positively. We don't need to swing from all or nothing here. It's not either negative thinking or blissful, happy thinking. It's just more balanced. Like when I got the CRA letter the second time when I was more regulated, it wasn't that I didn't think there was any danger. There was some. I needed to take action. But it was more balanced the way I thought about it. I wasn't thinking about it in such despairing, hopeless, terrifying ways. So use the 3R scale. Practice it. So I've linked two solutions, two videos to this to this video. So check them out. Please put your questions or comments down below. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and I will talk to you all later. Take care.